Look, it's no surprise that our computers are tracking everything that we do. Everything you click on, everything you look at, all has telemetry data. I have an article down below. Google had a class action lawsuit in 2020. They were keeping track of everybody's browsing data, even when you were using incognito mode. So what if you wanted to use your computer and just throw it away when you were done? Today, I'm gonna to show you why VMs are important. And by the end of the video, we'll have your very first virtual machine up and running. What if you could change between Mac, Linux, and Windows all at a click of a button? You can have multiple virtual machines on a single computer, so you can swap between them all seamlessly. Virtual machines are a lot like Lego. There's a million and one reasons why you might want to run a VM. They're essentially the building blocks of the digital world. Maybe you want to spin up a game server for your next game night. Maybe somebody blew up your Minecraft base. Go ahead and revert back to the last snapshot. It's like it never happened. Maybe you want to learn how to hack like we did when we hacked a car in this video here. We got our laptops, spun up a virtual machine, installed Kali or Parrot OS, and started hacking. You can also use this to go try your hand at things like Hack the Box to hone your skills. Maybe you need a file sharing server to back up all your applications and your precious family memories. And most important to me at least, you want to stay safe online. You can spin up a Linux VM and install a VPN, that way you're not sending all this telemetry data to Microsoft and Google, it also lets you appear like you're somewhere else on the planet altogether. Now back in the day, and I know I'm dating myself here, we used to use LimeWire to download all of our music. It was about 50-50 as to whether or not you would get your music or get a virus. Good news is, with a virtual machine, just roll back to your last snapshot. No harm, no foul. Or you can just delete the VM altogether. So what exactly is a virtual machine? The really simple version, a VM is a digital copy of a computer. You can see by this image here, you have your host machine, which is your physical computer, and maybe you're running Windows. And then within there, you can run different operating systems and software without having to change anything about your physical computer. You can also take snapshots of virtual machines to preserve its running state. This is especially helpful if you get a virus, maybe there's an update that breaks some software, or you change something about the operating system and now the machine won't boot. A couple of clicks and you can be up and running without having to reinstall everything all over again. You'll notice sometimes that software doesn't always run on your current computer. If you've ever tried to install an old game, sometimes you run into compatibility issues and it just won't run. Sometimes you've got legacy software for old devices or old hardware that just won't run on current machines. You can solve all of these problems through virtualization. Maybe you need to spin up a Windows XP virtual machine and then your devices all can talk to each other. Another really great reason to virtualize, you don't have to worry about your computer biting the dust. Good news is you can export virtual machines, pull them off, and put them on a different computer. They'll run just fine. At the end of the day, it's simple, it's free, and you need to know how to use virtual machines. Now there are lots of virtualization platforms to choose from. I recommend that you give them all a try when you get a chance. Today, to keep things simple, we're going to use Oracle's VirtualBox for no other reason than it's free, it's easy to use, it's simple to work with, and that's how I learned virtualization in the beginning. If you're on a Mac with an M1, M2, M3, I actually recommend that you use VMware Fusion Pro. It's free for personal use, and that's what I use on my MacBook all the time. If you want a guide on that, let me know in the comments below. So the first one you're going to get is VirtualBox. You can Google that, or there's a link down below. You're going to head on over to the download section, and then you're going to download the platform for you. So in this case, we're using Windows, so we're going to use Windows hosts. Now we need an operating system. So for this example, we're going to use Ubuntu. It's free. It's open source. Um, you should know how to use it. So we're going to head to Ubuntu.com, link in the description, and then you're going to download the most recent version. So we've got the VirtualBox installer and the Ubuntu image. So we're going to go ahead and install VirtualBox. Needs admin permission, so go ahead and allow that. Let's hit next. All of these settings here are default. They should be fine. If you need to change anything, you can do that now. Next, now it's gonna install network interfaces so the VM can communicate with the network and your computer. We're gonna proceed with installation, hit yes. We've got some missing dependencies. VirtualBox will take care of it for us. So go ahead and hit yes. And then we're ready to install, so click install. Perfect, and now we're gonna start VirtualBox. So hit finish. So here's the main VirtualBox interface. On the left, you're gonna have all of your virtual machines. On the right, you're gonna have the details about the virtual machines. We wanna make a new one, so we're gonna hit new. And we're gonna give it a name. The folder, this is where all your virtual machine files are gonna be stored. You can leave it as default, that's totally fine. ISO image, we need to go get the Ubuntu installer we just downloaded. We're gonna skip the unattended installation. Some of the more popular operating systems can be automated as far as installs go. I wanna walk you guys through start to finish just so you get a feel for it the first time. Now we're gonna give the computer some resources. Now keep in mind, these resources are shared between your host and any other VMs that are running on your computer. So as you can see here, I've got 32 gigs of RAM and 32 CPU cores. Make sure you balance that between your host and all of your available machines. Generally speaking, as long as you keep it within the green here, you should be fine. Um, but if you're running more than one virtual machine, you kind of have to do a little bit of balancing. So once you've got all that set, we're gonna go ahead and hit next. 
Now you're going to create your virtual hard disk. 25 gigs is totally fine for our Ubuntu box here. If you're running something like a file server or an application server, you're going to want that to be a little bit bigger. So once you've got that all set, you're going to hit next. Here's the system summary, the name, where it's stored, RAM, CPU, all that kind of stuff. Looks good. We'll hit finish. So now your virtual machine's created. You can see the Ubuntu over here. Here's all the details about the virtual machine. There's more settings in here than I can go over in this short video. Everything by default is fine though. So go ahead and hit start and we'll fire up the virtual machine. So just like that, we've booted into the VM. We're gonna run through the installer here to get everything all set up. So we're gonna choose language. English is fine for me. Uh, accessibility, if you need any of that, go ahead and set that up now. Keyboard layout, English US is pretty standard. Connect to the internet. Yes, I want it to connect to the internet. We want to install Ubuntu. We're going to hit next. We're going to do the interactive installation. Hit next. We're going to do the default selection of applications. Recommended proprietary software. These are things like hardware and drivers and all that kind of stuff. Again, this is a test box. We don't need to install those, but if you're going to use this as a daily driver, you probably would. So we're going to hit next. How do you want to install it? We're just going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. Um, you can do manual installation, like if you want to do hard drive petitioning and all that kind of stuff. Hit next. Let's create an account. So give everything a name. Uh, give the computer a name, your username, password. Now, just because it's a virtual machine, you need to make sure that your passwords are strong. Make them long, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, symbols, all that kind of stuff. You need some suggestions. I've got a video up here that talks more about passwords, but... Make them secure, treat this like any other computer you've got. So we're gonna create the account, hit next. Now here you can pick your time zone. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but pick wherever you are. Next, review your choices. Everything here looks good, so we're gonna hit install. Now this is gonna take a few minutes, so if you wanna grab a coffee or whatever, uh, go do that and let it install, and we'll come back when it's finished. All right, so it looks like everything's done. We're gonna go ahead and restart the VM. Uh, it says, please remove installation medium. It'll do this all automatically for you. Just hit enter. Perfect. So let's get signed back in. All right. Greeted by a nice splash screen. Welcome to Ubuntu 24.04. We're going to hit next. Ubuntu Pro, we're just going to skip. If you want to do some reading, you can do that here. Hit next. Uh, this is where it sends all the telemetry data. We don't want that, so hit no, and then hit next. Uh, it does have an app store, which is kind of nice, make your life a little bit easier. Cool, we'll hit finish. So now your virtual machine's all installed. Uh, there's a couple of things we have to do before we're done for the day, though. Uh, because it's a VM, the first thing I like to do is install the guest editions. Um, each platform calls these things a little bit different. They're basically drivers and different pieces of software that tell this machine that it's a VM. So we're gonna install that first. So go ahead and click on the disk and then run. Would you like to run it? Yes, give it your password. All right, so our first problem, we don't have bzip2 installed. Not a big deal. So if you click on the little icon up here, we're gonna get back into the terminal. Now it's not as scary as it looks. We're going to sudo apt install bzip2 and enter. Give it your password. Hit enter. It'll install it for you. Perfect. Everything looks good. So if you go back to the window, hit enter. It'll close it for you. Now we're going to run the software again. Now this will take a minute or two. It's installing all its files and drivers and devices and stuff. So if you have a read here, this system's not actually set up to build kernel modules, not a big deal. There's a couple of pieces of software we're gonna install. So GCC, make, and Perl. This looks like it's done, so we'll hit enter. And we're gonna go back to our terminal here. Pseudo apt install uh, GCC space make slash Perl. These are all different pieces of software, just so you know. And then we're going to add dash Y because it's going to ask you if you want to install. You can just do it automatically with dash Y and hit enter. Perfect. All done. So we're going to run this software one more time. Or if you're watching the video, you already know what you need to install. So just install it and then run this installer and you should be okay. 
Perfect. Looks like it's done. So the guest editions is installed. Everything's good there. Now I like to update my operating systems. So we're going to do that next. So if you hit your Windows key or whatever, and then you go type term, hit enter. Now we're going to do updates. So sudo apt uh, update. Give it your password. Now it's going to go to Ubuntu servers and grab everything that needs updating. Now you're going to do sudo apt upgrade. Enter. Right? Do you want to continue? Yes. Enter. Awesome. So now you've got a brand new virtual machine that has all its guest additions and it's all up to date. The last thing we're going to do here is take a snapshot of the machine. So if anything goes wrong or a setup goes wrong or an update breaks something, you have a snapshot that you can go back to and you don't have to set this whole machine up again. It'll come back to exactly this point in time. So to do that, we're going to go up here to machine and then we're going to hit take snapshot and then give it a name. And then if you want to add some description, I always like to add dates and stuff to it. So 6-1-2024. And then we're going to hit OK. It's going to take a second here and take the snapshot. And it's done. OK, so now that your snapshot's done, you can go ahead and freely use this machine as you see fit. If there's stuff you want to install, things you want to do, uh, learn some command line or some programming, feel free to do that now. When you're done, like any other computer, you can hit the power button and turn it off. So we're going to power off. Yes, perfect. Now, if you want to go back to any of your snapshots, if you click on this little menu here and then go to snapshots. So this is the current state of the machine. And then here's the snapshot that we just took. If you right click and hit restore, what this is going to do is take the VM back to the same state that it was in when you took the snapshot. So if you double click and start the machine, you'll see that it's restoring its virtual state. One of the other things that I experienced while I was running this machine, it kept getting really slow and freezing all the time. Turns out on new installations of Windows, they have what's called memory isolation enabled. If you go into your Windows security application and then you go under device security, and you see here it says core isolation. Now you've got the memory integrity. If this is turned on virtualization software, doesn't work. So if you run into any issues, you can disable this memory integrity restart your computer, and then you should be good to go. And generally, you should keep this kind of thing enabled. If you want to do more reading about that, I'll have an article linked down below that kind of explains what it is. So that's how you install Ubuntu on VirtualBox. Um, the same sort of rules apply to any OS that you're going to install, but that's it. Now you know what VMs are, you know why they're important, and you've even set up your very first installation. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. If you guys want a guide for the MacBooks, like the M1, M2, M3 processors, let me know. I can make that happen as well. Hope this was helpful. And as always, thanks so much. We'll see you in the next one.